Time now for the Educated Retirement Show with your host, Jay Kaplan. Jay discusses reverse mortgages and can answer your questions at 951-922-3532. Call lines are open at 951-922-3532. And now here's Jay. Well, thank you all for staying with us for the second hour of the retirement of the Educated Retirement Show. And just to remind you, we are listening to the Educated Retirement Radio here on your home planet. 1490 KM, KMET AM, the Mighty Met, which I guess it used to was called, but we're still calling it here. And just a short reminder that the enemy of retirement is compounding inflation. Also, it is not a loan of any kind. It is health care. That's the biggest kind of surprise any of us are going to get. Now, I understand I had a lot. I mean, I don't even want to tell you what the billing was for me, but I have Medicare. And that's wonderful. And uh, the, uh, the thing is, is a lot of people do not have Medicare in this country. They're younger. And if you do have Medicare, remember, it does not cover a long-term care. Uh, nursing homes are, as we talked about with uh, Steve Wanamaker, uh, resorts, retirement resorts. It does not cover that. And 70% of the American people think that it does. Now, we're going to have, uh, if you hang on here, we're going to have uh, Chris Bissonette uh, join us at about 4.30. And uh, I don't know if you've heard him before. You probably, you should have. He's a great conspiracy person. But he also really knows how to save you thousands, tens of thousands, on educating your children. So I don't know whether we're going to get into some of that, which, you know, we might. And we might also get into some conspiracy things and UFOs, which, you know, I love. So uh, let's get back to me here. Let me get my uh, monitor there. It's a little weird, but, you know, that's okay. I'm a little weird, too. In any case, uh, we want to get back to where we were on the uh, we were on some uh, birthdays. And uh, we talked about, and we finished Lawrence Welk, I believe. We finished uh, the Aragon Ballroom, which I am, you know, if it's, it's nice to say, hey, I'm, I'm too young for that. But let me show you my phone number again, one more quick time. And you know what? We can talk about those UFOs. And if you've been to the Aragon Ballroom, I want to hear from you. Um, I just want to talk. I just want to, let's talk about anything. I really want somebody who uh, doesn't think reverse mortgages are a good thing to call. In fact, I would love to have a live conversation with that person on the air. But we can talk about that. Maybe I can try to get that lined up. But uh, this is drheckham.com, D-R-H-E-C-M, which stands for Home Equity Conversion. Remember, you're not taking your equity out unless you want to. You can take some out, and you'll probably still beat inflation. You know the uh, increasing values, which will increase as time always goes on. Now, once in a while, that doesn't happen, like 08. And when that happens, let's say you pass away, then your children do not have to pay off a loan if that loan is higher than the value of the house. They, if they want to keep the value, if they want to keep the house. They pay off only a percentage of that value. And if they don't, you know, nobody wants it, everybody walks away. It's non-recourse. Nobody has any problem with their future when it comes to that. And losses are so small, you know, it's just, especially in this part of the country, it's just probably not going to happen. And you can also... Uh, join me at uh, uh, theeducatedretirement.com, and there you can watch this show if you like on the Watch Now, and you can check the YouTube channel, which, like I said, has all the shows in the past. And I'm not quite caught up. I could have been, but like I, I mentioned last week, every time I do try to get caught up, 
uh, all of you which thankfully have subscribed. And if you haven't, as Ron Siegel would say, shame on you. But uh, if you've subscribed, you get notifications. And I don't want to overrun people with notifications because I'm catching up from when I was in the hospital. But as you recall, before we get on to our birthday, first thing I want to talk about is the junk girls. Now, is, isn't there a little card of theirs? Oh, yeah, let me show you, just for the heck of it. We talked about the junk girls uh, last week in uh, San, uh, San Luis Obispo. So I want to show you we got another shipment. Not that we get a shipment every week, but... Uh, Here's a bunch of these things. Now, these were very inexpensive, but I think they're cool. And uh, we can put air-type uh, growths in them, you know, flowers and things, plants. Or we can punch a hole and put a real one in there or, or whatever. But okay. and a whistle in there. What's that? Put a whistle in there. Yeah, we could put a whistle in there if we want to. So, so there. So we got that and we got this which I think is really cool and really spacey looking. Okay, let me start it off that way. And uh, this is a real, this was a real plant or whatever. I don't know, is it still? Yeah. I guess it's still. Air, air plant. So this is an air plant, okay? But that's a weight that... Uh, yeah, but this thing is so cool sculpture. that it looks like either radar or one of those things that are supposed to be in Siberia that the uh, that the aliens gave us to protect us from uh, shooting, you know, from meteors, comets, and other UFOs. But this, I think, is really cool. Or land of the triffids. Or yeah, or the triffids. Of course, triffids still have a much much closer relationship to me, which I love. But anyway, another birthday. 1967, actually it was March 11th, but it's close enough, a Scottish-American actor by the name of John Barrowman, that's B-A-R-R-O-W-M-A-N, and he joined us in 1967, and uh, he is a singer and a comic book writer and an actor. He's best known for his role, really, as Captain Jack Harkness in Doctor Who and his own, his own, uh, what do they call it, runoff or his his own uh, show, Torch, what's that, spinoff, spin Torchwood. So uh, let me show you, I don't know where to start with some of this stuff. Here he is. Okay, now I only knew of him as Torchwood or Doctor Who. And sometimes I ask people if they've ever seen Doctor Who, and they say, no, is that a new show? No, I say, well, yeah, it kind of came out in 1964. and has been on ever since, I think. <laughs> anyway, there's a picture, and uh, there, there, say, uh, and he started off in Doctor Who. So here's, oh, look at that, Doctor Who. And there is a... Uh, Dalek. A, a, what they call Dalek. And uh, this is one thing that's on my desk at all times is a Dalek. So, uh, oh, and of course he can move around and he's got a plunger here and a death ray here. here. And this, and he's got a side that kind of reminds me of uh, those candies that used to come on paper. But they were not long enough pieces of paper for uh, Jack Kerouac, but they still were good. Take uh, my buddy there. Uh, John, John Hurt, unfortunately, has passed away. Uh, but he was in Doctor Who. And, of course, there's a Doctor Who magazine, so what the heck. So, uh, that's that. There's a mark, there's an ad on the back for the, the prisoner. So I'm not sure if a new prisoner has come out, but do you remember that series, The Prisoner, with what's his name? Uh, and I forgot his name offhand, but it was so popular. Uh, when my wife and I first met and we were uh, doing St. Patty's Day and things like that at, uh, at uh, Houlihan's, We'd come home at 2 in the morning, and they were playing reruns of The Prisoner. But, 
here's uh, a little bit of torch wood for us. And uh, hopefully you've watched some. If not, you know, you can always get access. And here is uh, another torch wood, a complete season. The complete first season. You know, it's about time to watch this again. I thought it was very entertaining, okay? Very, very entertaining. And uh, Jack, Ho Captain Jack Harkness, uh, is, let me show you. You know, this is a picture we did for him. You, I showed you that picture a little while ago of, uh, from... Uh, uh, Burroughs, or uh, no, the, Jack Kerouac? No, no, the real dark one who I get mixed up with and uses up black ink. Oh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. But you know what? This was before I put in a new black cartridge, but it's kind of cool. There's a picture of uh, Burrowman, and here's another really, I think these are really neat looking. Uh, so there's another one of uh, that came out that way. But uh, he actually studied at in San Diego before landing a leading role in Anything Goes in London. Also, a lot of jobs on Broadway in such productions as Miss Saigon, Phantom of the Opera, Sunset Boulevard, and The Producers, just to name a few. So, uh, he was, he's not just a science fiction person. But speaking of Doctor Who, there's... Uh, first season which I really really liked that doctor he was a little on the gruff side and I thought it was perfect he was only there once and of course my favorite doctor uh, which David is Tennant. David Tennant and there we go with the whole season of there six discs and to say that uh, I am a, a fan of Doctor Who might be an understatement, but so be it. Uh, there's Peter Cabaldi, which was one of the latest doctors in a brilliant, brilliant one. And uh, there's an older one back there just to show you. And uh, this is... Uh, my wife's favorite and one of my favorite Doctor Who's who also showed up in uh, what Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. as the brown uh, wizard and he's really 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 funny so uh, so there uh, he also did uh, here's the Doctor Who well there's David Tennant once again and he also showed up, uh, he also was a uh, comic book writer with a sister, pretty much. So uh, I hadn't known that at all, uh, but uh, I found out about it. So here is a couple of pictures of comic books that he was involved in. See what I mean? And here is another, well, this was, a, this is a Torchwood comic book, but he wrote it. So I, I would suspect that he wrote some of the screenplays for the television show also. Now, I saw him in person having lunch up at Lake Arrowhead a couple years ago, but so be it. And I'm looking at this stuff here and... It was uh, released... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So let me just give you a reminder that you're listening to the Educated Retirement Radio here on your home station and at your home planet, because we're going to talk about a planet here in just a minute, 1490 KMET Radio. So remember, call me, 866-955-2233, 866-955-2233. So, remember that uh, today, on this day in history, Forbidden Planet was released on March 15th, which is pretty, you know, it's not that far down the line. Today's the 12th. 
So the model, well, let me just show you. This is a picture disc. I've got a non-picture disc also of the music from Forbidden Planet, but I think this is really cool. And uh, Moviola is the, is, uh, is, is the brand, but so be it. Um, 1958, electronic music where uh, it really, it was not uh, recognized uh, for the people who did it, for the, the uh, composers, which was B.B. and Louis Barron. And uh, they got their uh, come up and still later they have been highly, uh, you know, recognized for their work. On this now, I'm going to show you. Uh, this is a little on the fragile side, but here is the. Is that the right side forward? Yeah. Here is the uh, flying saucer that was used by uh, Earth. So it's not a flying saucer from outer space. It's a flying saucer from our space to theirs, and. Uh, Hopefully you can see it pretty good. I think maybe probably you you probably understand and know it already from one thing or another. But I think it is a real beauty. So that particular model of flying saucer was also used for a total of seven twilight zones. And uh, one of those was to serve man. And yeah, we know that one real well. The Munchkin Land from the Wizard of Oz set was actually the garden area in Forbidden Planet. And don't forget, of course, uh, St. Patty's Day is March 14th. And that is, no, come on. Kathleen, St. Patrick's Day is... Is that the 14th? Uh, 17th. It's always the 17th, right? Yeah. So that's me in my old age, which I think you can, some of you out there can identify with. So um, with that, I want to remind everybody that we will be having uh, Chris Bissonette with us pretty soon. And, uh, you know, he is the uh, the man that thinks we uh, did not land on the moon. And uh, we'll see uh, what he has to say today. And as you may recall, last week we started talking about uh, Tom Markle and uh, what he wanted to do. And I wanted to share a little with you. Now, I also have a PowerPoint or whatever. I'm not sharing this with you. I'm not screen save. I'm not screen sharing because I'm not sure if that's going to work right now. But uh, I have one, too, that I, I use, and it's going to be on Facebook. I'm going to be giving uh, uh, webinars on Facebook. I used to give a lot of in-person, up to 300 people or so, at hotels and other things like that, especially with... Uh, great uh, elder care attorneys such as uh, Susan Geffen, etc., all over the place. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy that. But I can't do that just yet. So if you go out and get your vaccination, I can do that more often now. And uh, 50 million seniors, that's more than 10,000 seniors turn 60 every day and i think there's a whole lot turning 65 and 75 every day and we talked about a little bit about that with uh tj from uh, one heart there is 7.1 trillion in se unused senior home equity and as um ron siegel would say that's 7.1 trillion dollars is hidden in coffee cans buried in the backyard, whereas it could be in a place where you can get at it. That's called the liquid. So I don't see any reason why somebody wouldn't want cash like that, liquid, where they could actually use it. So Medicare, according to Tom, is underfunded. I'm not sure. 
I'm kind of more on the optimistic side. I think we've got a great set of millennials moving along, which will be paying for this. And of course, it'll come back to them when they get of age, which includes Social Security also. So I don't know what you think. I'd love for you to call in and let us know. But research has proven, and I mentioned this uh, with my talk a little bit, that seniors live longer, happier, healthier lives at home. So the biggest, uh, you know, as I said before, the largest enemy to retirement is compounding interest and health care. It's not a loan. And remember, a heckam or reverse is not a loan unless you take money from it. It's making your equity liquid. And if you already have a loan, it's turning that loan into a product where you have the ability to either make payments or not make payments. You know, I'm going to have to have myself on as a guest one of these days soon so I can actually talk about these things, which is what this show is supposed to be all about. But I, I have so much fun talking about the nostalgic stuff. I get sidetracked very, very easy, easy. So what happens when you get a reverse mortgage? Well, you control the mortgage, not the bank anymore. That's, uh, I think, pretty good. So it's the same as the loan you have now if you have one, except you, the homeowner, control the bank. Control. Well, it would be nice if you could control the bank, you know, buy some stock in it. You control the mortgage. The bank that no longer controls when you pay, how you pay, and all of that good stuff. Seniors can pay their mortgage like a forward mortgage or not pay their mortgage like a reverse mortgage. Like I said before, and like my friend uh, um, uh, Mr. Mandelman once said to a lot of people, you can put it in forward. It's like a gear shift. You can put it in forward and make the payments anytime you like. No different than what you have now. Or you can put it in neutral and really reduce your payment with a revert with a uh, interest only payment, which means your your uh, loan amount will never go up. But then again, remember in Southern California, anywhere or California, for God's sake, uh, you're probably going to not lose equity because the values are going up like crazy, six percent and more right now. And even if it just settles down to three or four percent, my God. It's tough to lose equity. So you can do that by putting it in neutral or you can, you know, put it in reverse. And if you're in reverse, you're making no payment whatsoever. Therefore, the balance will go up. But like I said, it will not. Remember, the balance of the loan is a part, not a total, just a part of what the value of your home is. So as the value of your home gets bigger, the amount of your loan Will probably get bigger but that is if you never make a payment so there's no penalties for not making the mortgage so you know if, what would you like to be there's in two groups of people one group has these people uh, that will uh, have to make payments and if you miss a payment then guess what you uh, you get a nasty letter or even a nice letter if the first one, then you get a nasty letter, then you get foreclosed upon. Or here's this other group over here. And uh, that group, you can make a payment whenever you want. If you'd rather not take a trip around the world, you don't have to. So you tell me, which group would you rather be a part of? So, you know, reduce the worry in your life. Uh, Okay, so this gives you so much more flexibility and resources. So we'll talk more about that. But right now, our sponsors and the station need to do a little talk. So we'll be back very, very soon. Take care of yourselves, but don't go too far. Bye-bye. Well, this is Jay, and Jay is welcoming, welcoming everybody back to the Educated Retirement Show here on KMET. 
don't forget to give me a call. And um, we have a great guest, which is, is very entertaining. And most of all, he can save you if you're a grandson, if you're a grandfather, your grandchildren, if you're a parent, your children, and maybe you're a future parent. I mean, he can save you tens of thousands of dollars in sending your family members to college. It is so expensive these days. It's not like when I spent $700 per semester at Cal State Fullerton. Oh, it's, Jesus. It's a Is little... The 30s? Different. What's that? Is that the yeah. 30s? Yeah. Actually, it was the 60s even, I think. But, uh, you know, that was fun. It ain't so much fun. Well, it's still fun while you're going to college. No, it's not. It's Zoom. It's not fun. Well, it, that's true. I forgot about that. The disaster. That is that is really true because, I, you know, the fun is really um, the interaction with other people. That's why all of you need to get you need to get vaccinated so I can get back out there in the world. So if you care about other people, get vaccinated. But the thing is, it's so expensive these days to go to school. I mean, it's it's tens of thousands of dollars to go to school. And, you know, if if in fact you're the one paying, the one going to college with, with uh uh, with these uh, loans, my God, you're saddled with this for most of your life. And yes. I got a few of those loans just to have fun with. Uh, and I think I paid maybe as much as 2% interest, so there was no reason paying them off. But that is a whole different world right now. Yeah, but it's, not they, too high. it's not too high in the interest, but people still have big balances. That's the problem. I know, and that's where Chris Bissonette can really, really help. So go ahead, Chris. I've been yapping too much. You know how I do. I need no, you did a good job. I appreciate it. Um, you know, as I call it, there's the college planning dilemma and there's the student loan crisis. They're two separate things, but obviously tied together. And in 10 seconds, college planning dilemma is it's just super complicated People are already stressed out already with all the other stuff you got to worry about. And then when you when you say, oh, hey, I'm a senior in high school, the families just have no plan. And the plan is to go to, you know, an inexpensive school, at least they perceive to be inexpensive, take loans out and, you know, there's no plan. And the cheapest schools have no money. So you go to a Cal State school at 26,000 a year, you wow. pay 20. You pay 20. However, yeah. if you can get into a good Ivy League type school, such as Tufts University or one of these, you know, Notre Dame or Penn State, you know, these dream colleges, which are looking for California people, and you pay $10,000 a year. Wow. Don't know this. Just people don't know it. It's So that's the dilemma. And then they graduate with all these loans, and oh, there's all kinds right. of things available. And it's schools are looking for people right now to put them in the seats because they're down 20 percent people oh, of course zoom. yeah people sick of zoom so it's a great time to be going to college if you do it right you know and you and i face and this and this thing we face kind of the same thing in our in our businesses and we're not going to talk about my business during your time but when it comes to reverse mortgages and what you're which, which you are teaching, it's the same thing. People need to understand, and they just don't want to take the time to do it. They do their taxes, so they don't want to do those forms that you that you help them with. So yes. It's just crazy. You're correct. Yeah, the people don't want to complete the the FAFSA. Yeah, a lot of people. Here's the thing that's crazy. I have probably ten interns that work with me around the country. And I always broach the subject of college financial planning and FAFSA. None of them have a clue. And they're in college. I'm all, did you do the FAFSA? No, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't it's even know what it is. Yeah. That, here's a program that's a free application for federal student aid. Here's a free app to get money and students don't complete it. They said that app, FAFSA apps for some school are down 40% this year from last year. Wow. That's how confused people are. 
Wow. So what do people do? I mean, first, I'll tell you what to do. Call Chris. And he'll give out his information here in a, mm -hmm. in a couple of minutes. But call Chris, whether you use him or not, and you should use him. He's got the information you want and actually you need if you're looking at college yourself or you're the parents of, like we said, grandparents, relatives, or anything you need to get out. You need the information that Chris has in his brain. In my arsenal, yes. Uh, oh. People just, if anything, if they reach out to me, I'm FAFSA Pro is kind of my local name here for Southern California. FAFSA Pro, if they go to that on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, they can look me up. I do a 10 minute complimentary Zoom meeting explains how college financial aid works. And uh, if anything, they can glean the education. And if they want to hire me, they can, but they don't have to. Right, but hiring you is <clears throat> gonna be a way, it's like you you charge them a negative because they're gonna save so much by paying you a little, they get back so much. But in some, in some situations, I've had clients get 60,000 in gift, gift aid from a college per wow. year. 60,000. That's the most so far. Tufts University and uh, NYU. I have two clients that got 60,000 a year gift. I'd love yes. to go to NYU. Am I, what do you think? You, you don't have to look too hard. I think you know what. Are you look, talking to me or the other guy? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just want to go to New York for a while. But, you know, so be it. But anything else they need or, you, you know, I don't know what um, they want to I would say the other tip right now is um, that, again, what I come across is people don't know they have to do it every year. That's a surprise to people. Some people don't know that once you apply to the school, Jay, guess uh -huh. what? You've also got to complete the financial aid side. I've had people pissed off. Like I applied to 10 different colleges and now you're telling me I have to do another application to get money. I thought it was together. So that's another surprise to Americans. And then the other thing that's gonna be coming right now in the month of March, maybe early April, but February, March, people get award letters. Congratulations. Like you said you went to where, San Diego State? Uh, me, no, I, I uh, Cal State Fullerton. All right, right, real tough. Yeah, there's a tough school to get into, right? I'm kidding, but. So yeah, you're gonna get okay, okay. You're going to get your award letter, right? It says, congrats, you're coming to the school. It's 27 grand a year, blah, blah, blah. Here's what we're giving you. You can go back to the school in March and April and ask them for more money. You can do what's called financial renegotiation. And in today's times with COVID, CARES Act, all these other monies they receive, they're apt to give you money for college. So most people don't know you can do that and you can do it every year. Wow. Now you once told us on an early on a on a previous show about I think it had to do with parents filling it out so wrong as far as value of either their home and or rental properties or businesses or that kind of thing. I think yeah. that is so important. Yeah, they and, put the they put the what they think it's worth, but you can put the uh, the tax assessed value, and as you know with property. The tax right. assessed value is usually a lot less, sometimes it's dramatically. Way and, less. And that just screw that just I've seen people I've, I have a friend of mine cost him forty thousand dollars in aid. But that answer just because that, of that mistake. That one answer on the FAFSA. There's only yeah. on the FAFSA. I don't want you to give away too many of the secrets, but I thought that one was so important that it you know it lighted yeah, up. That's a big one. No. That's a big one. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's just amazing how easy some of these things are that will save you tens of thousands of dollars just by confer conferring with Chris just a little bit. And, you know, and he's a nice guy. Look at him. He's smiling. Look at, look at that guy. I'm trying so, to be nice today. I'm in, right. a, I'm in a good mood. I went to happy hour earlier, so I'm in a good mood. <laughs> Okay, we're getting there, believe it or not, almost halfway through. Are we going to talk about some good stuff or what? Yeah, I think we should. I want to make sure you give out your information, though, one more time about getting a hold of you for to save tens yeah, of dollars. Yeah, if any, any of your listeners want to get complimentary advice, they can always reach out to me. There's no charge for me to answer basic questions. They can do it through, It's my company is FAFSA Pro, 
fafsapro.us. That's my website. I also have the LinkedIn, Facebook page for both of those. And uh, you can contact me through that. All my information's on there. And I'm happy to advise people with even general questions because people that usually have money and, you know, they usually hire me anyway. So it's, I'm happy to give out info to people that just have basic stuff. So thanks again for having me on. And Oh, yeah, I think, I think what you have to say there. And you, you do a lot more, and I know you can't get into that on the radio or but you, you know a lot and that's important and a lot of that other stuff ties into this too so. yes exactly so, so I, yeah I'm a, I'm a, and as jay was kind of alluding to which i appreciate jay is okay. not you know the college financial planning i do is a niche but there's also another realm of financial planning that i can help people with mm -hmm. that's what we're here to talk about today so just for your listeners when you get your award letter you should be going back to the school and asking for more money right now because they're open to doing it. All right. And so that's if, the takeaway. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, the best way you're going to, and that's the name of that tune. And you're going to call him or you're going to look him up as he already said, but Chris, I don't know if you were listening earlier on the show, NASA Nelly gave us a report about uh, the Phoenix lights. Oh, I love the Phoenix Lights. That's the, literally the biggest UFO incident of our lifetime. Some it people is. put Roswell number two over the Phoenix Lights. Well, the reason I think Roswell is number two is because more people actually saw the Phoenix Lights. Exactly. And that's so important. But when there, I, there's a lot for me to talk about Roswell, too. I mean, I'm convinced it happened. Absolutely. But that's, that's another story. I think it's almost a proven fact at this point, just because of that little, um, the memo, the guy's holding yeah. it up, and you can zoom in on it and make out yeah. trash. And I think that there's a smoking gun with that one. There's also the fact that there's so many deathbed confessions yes. that have to do with it. And, and, as far, and if ever somebody wants to discount all of that, remember, if it was this Project Mogul, it was very, very important to pick up the balloon as soon as it happened. To find out what the well, you're saying if it really was a weather balloon, it, well, they had a board, that, yeah, they had the that, group wanted to get it right, or that project mobile, which was more important than a weather balloon, they would have it. They would be on yeah, it. You wouldn't have a rancher them. calling in saying they found yeah. a bunch of debris. Is right. the answer. and, and it, that's this, that, that crash happened like six days before anybody found it and that would oh, really? I didn't know that it was that, they, yeah, that would never be the case if this were actually yeah, exactly if it was a real military operation they'd be, right right they'd be on it and the other thing is they don't send those things to you know back then Wright Patterson was the area 51 of, of this country oh okay and they sent that stuff immediately to their area 51 by way of uh Fort uh you know, uh, yeah, Fort something. I saw that. Um, that's where yeah. they sent the debris from this crash site. Yeah. Right, right. And, and Fort Bragg? Is yeah. it Fort Bragg? No, it's you know Dallas, Fort Worth. But it, it was on their way to uh, to you know their area fair for fifty one yeah. at the time, which was you know in Ohio, and they never would have done that if this were just a project mogul or something. That never would have happened. It was, it was it obviously it happened, and I think is there's too much evidence, especially with like you said, deathbed conventions where people get hypnotized. So a UFO crashed in the forties right. in New Mexico. Why? Because they had nuclear weapons, only place in the world. UFOs were checking them out. They either two UFOs hit together, yeah, or, because there was two crash sites, or one just right. crashed. And there's just bodies and all this other info was taken from. I mean, it's a proven fact at this point. I think. Right. And I don't know if you probably didn't hear because you're a busy man. Last week and the week before, we talked a bit about Jackie Gleason because he had a birthday. And his good buddy, uh, Nixon, uh, picked him up after golf one day in Palm Springs or whatever they were at midnight without the Secret Service and drove him to an Air Force base where they looked at parts of a crashed UFO and mm -hmm. looked at about four different frozen bodies of- Really? Uh, yeah. what Jackie Gleason said. 
Jackie Gleason swear, swore. No, to no, him. I believe it. I, I believe it, but I'm just, that's pretty cool. And so, because him right. and Nathan were buddies, he took him over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, cool. and his how wife, cool is cool is that? too, about, it, about how he came back and slouched in his chair and he was all white and gave her, his wife, the report. Now, Jackie Gleason was a big UFO buff and he even built, that. he built one of his houses to look like a UFO. I wish I could do that. But, that's interesting. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. Well, recently there were some, what I saw about a week ago, there were some lights over Las Vegas. Oh, okay. They were, they were triangle shaped, yeah. very similar to the lights over Phoenix. They had that yeah. triangle pyramid. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, saw do, it. I do believe that some of these craft are our own. And I think they're, they are our own because we have back engineered a yeah, lot reverse, of what reverse we engineered learned. yes right, right. and uh, i think so i think so especially from i believe these crash sites just like the movie terminator when they found the arm and they reverse yeah, engineered yeah. it to a terminator right. Right. it's the same thing they right. say from um from the one in new mexico they got kevlar suits night vision computer chip fiber optics and there's another one in there. Yeah, too. I know we were working on those things anyway, but this really, I think, really gave us a jump start on a lot of that stuff. Well, and they I simply know, really accelerated after that. Like we really yeah, knew that right. else. So. And I don't know if you read the book Day After Roswell. I've got it around the corner here. I don't know if I have. And Kat, Kathleen, can you bring me the Day After Roswell from the hallway here? And, uh, you know, that was uh, written by uh, Colonel Corso, who said he was in charge at the mm. Pentagon with back engineering UFO material. Mm. And uh, he wrote this book before he died. And I might be getting a hold of it here to, sh to oh, show cool. it. But, you know, I believe him. What can I say? Well, I there's too many people have come out. You know, it's just I know. I know. And of course, there's other things to talk about, like the moon landing, which I'm not sure I agree with you 100 percent. But I find it so fascinating. Wait, that they that we faked it? You don't? You, you have a? You think maybe we did go in the 60s, but we can't go I, today? I think maybe we went in the 60s, and I think we were. I think there's two reasons we did. We never went back. Okay. There's a lot of people yelling and screaming about the, all the money we're spending going now and going to Mars. Yeah. And, and a lot of people were all upset about spending money going to the moon. But you know what? They didn't pack all that money together and take it to the moon and leave it there. All that money was spent right here in this economy and great for our economy. Mm -hmm. But I think there's two reasons. I like one better than the other. One reason is because we could run all of New York City for a whole year on one shuttle full of helium-3, which is basically newly nuclear energy, but safe nuclear energy. And, you know, the, peop the powers that be here on Earth, they don't want that. They want us to continue with, with fossil fuels as long as we can, even though China now is starting to go there to do mining for helium-3. And the other reason is that the aliens on the moon told us not to come back. I think that's a cool one. But I think it could be. I'm not putting it way out there in outer space. I am I'm thinking that it, it, it absolutely could be. And there's so many reports from Armstrong and others about the others that are there on, on the moon. And we've got a bunch of books also, which I wish I could get up and go get, about... Uh, you know, who else is on the moon? So you never know. Oh, all right. Well, um, interesting. Supposedly we can't go today. So last time we went up in space, I think we went to the Mir space station, which is that's like. That's true. That's true. Uh, that's, in, that's not very far. That, a couple hundred miles. Yeah, that's like. But a, 50 a years ago, of, we went 238,000 miles. Yeah, so going to the space station, the International Space Station, is like a, a gnat on an elephant's butt compared to it going to the moon. Well, yeah, because um, you're going to land on the moon, take your stupid dune buggy, cruise around, and come back. It's impossible. They can't do it today. And of we course, really, we've talked. They show those Tesla rockets exploding like 
recently, like they just landing on Earth. Yeah, the big ones. I mean, those are so cool. You know, those Tesla rockets for Mars. I think it's raining here. You guys they get look rain? No, but my boy, all I'm looking outside, and all of a sudden it's dark out there. And uh, you know, those rockets that Tesla has for yeah. the Mars, they look like the old science fiction rockets. That's cool. That's so cool, but you know they blow up a little bit too much. But you know we talk so much about the the film, The Shining. Well, also the uh, the other one too is uh, oh yeah, The Shining because of the yeah. blue. Now, did I ever? Did you see that Room Two Thirty Seven movie? I have it. I have it. Okay, I'm, it to, I'm real familiar I'm, with the whole. Because I was going to lend it to you. Because there's like, you know, yeah, several. He, he, he got propositioned by the military to film it, uh, and then that's why they did ninth, the 2001: A Space Odyssey the year before they went to the moon. So that way, people would see this is what it's supposed to look like. So when he filmed it, it would look similar. It's all set up. It's all set okay. Up. So what new do you have on conspiracy stuff like that, the UFOs and things? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that too. I would say still the newest one I have, and it's not that new actually, was that Bigfoot is real. Uh -huh. <laughs> I st I'm still. Now, that one I believe he is. I believe well, they're. I believe they're out there. What, what do you think? Well, here was the thing they said: is you can't film them. They actually have like they're like a predator. The movie Predator, where they have like a yeah. they flip in and out. I've seen I've seen them. lots of filming of the, of them, but they can you can record their sound. That was the big thing. You can but I've I've sound. I've seen I've seen uh, film of them many times, many many times, on these shows that I watch and things. So and you can see it on Amazon and those things. Yeah, that, I watch them on Amazon. Well, know, they have a lot of footage of them, but I also saw the Patterson footage. The you know. Right, from the right. 60s where they really analyze it and they're like this ain't some guy in a bear suit it's like a no. woman has boobs there's a contusion on the leg you can mm -hmm. see like the arms have a scuff mark from rubbing up against like like it's they're like this is a real thing it's not a fake like even they're trying to disprove it you know yeah fascinating i don't know i thought that was fascinating like there's a bigfoot species living among us and they're calling it kind of extraterrestrial style you I'm not sure I get into that part of it, although everything is possible, believe me. I'm pretty open-minded about everything. I told you about the one thing that I saw, right, that blew my mind. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is some of these people saying, oh, you need a body. You have to have a body. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of true, though. I kind of, I understand that. Well, I don't completely because, you know, I believe in electrons, but I've never seen one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, things like that. And I don't know if you like Jeff Meldrum, who is a PhD and teaches at, you know, university level in, uh, I don't think, it's not Utah, it's the other one, it's where the potatoes come from. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, he points out the fact that there's so much evidence, especially... Well, on the Amazon, I'm really surprised Amazon, too, because they seem like they're... I'm surprised they have so many good documentaries and all this crazy. I know, stuff. I know. That's a crazy place. I love it. I'm yeah. surprised. I'm actually really surprised. So, um, that was the newest one. Like I said, I, I think the other one too. I've been hearing a lot on is the vaccine, which some people say the airport scanner can pick up if you've been vaccinated. How crazy <laughs> is that one? Well, I got I got vaccinated the other day. Now my wife has two titanium hips from arthritis. Uh -huh. And she uh, she carries a card with her that telling so for the airports. Now let me tell you, the uh, aftermath for me was not that wonderful on this first shot. But remember, I am pretty weak. I really I can't walk real well. I'll, I'll get there. Uh -huh. But you know I am pretty weak. Uh, my wife she had her shot the day before, and her arm really hurt. Now for me it was like somebody punched her in the arm. For me, did you punch her? No, no, no. She would punch me back too much. So I don't do that. Uh, for me, it did not hurt unless I touched it and then I could feel it. What happened to me was I got so tired. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that I had a nine hour, you know, surgery and I'm recovering from it. I think I'm doing pretty well right you now. You look like you're pretty good. Yeah, I feel I feel I'm starting to feel like before May of last 
of last year when I first got sick. Except I'm skinnier now. Everybody told me I'd feel so much better, you know, losing weight. But, you know, what I do feel is I feel cold when it's cold. I well, used to that. That's a good one. And you're I also used, more hungry if you're not as big. Yeah, I, I used to not feel cold. I tell people I don't fat. I'm fat. I'm fine. Yeah, you've got your own, uh, yeah. your own little covering there. Yeah, huh? but things are much my diet. You look good. Oh, one minute, you know, and I'm sorry. I want to talk about. Uh, conspiracies and weird things and UFOs for the whole two hours for the of the show. So you can come back almost any time you want because most of the uh, guests only last like a half hour or so and I got another hour and a half. Or so. so I think with the last 30 seconds or so, you need to give out your, the, for the college thing, give out your contact information because God, it's so important. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. And again, thanks for having me on. It's always a lot of it's fun. It's a pleasure and it's so much fun when you are on. I, I do like talking about all this crazy stuff, but getting back to uh, you know what Americans really need, especially people in high school, college, it's they need direction, they need a strategy. So feel free to reach out to me, Chris Bissonette. You can find me on the web at FASFA Pro. And then you can always call me at 949-590-9940. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoy it when you're on. I wish you could be on more often, but we're going to talk about that. And in the meantime, I'll tell you that uh, nostalgia ain't what it used to be. So think about that one. And uh, remember that uh, Kaplan will be here on the same corner in front of the cigar store next week. Thanks so much. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs>